Now joining us via telephone link up from the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa is Elastas Mwencha. He is the African Union Deputy Chairperson. Good evening, Mr. Mwencha. Good evening, Shaq, and uh, thank you for having me on your program. Well, it's always a pleasure, of course, uh, having you on Straight Talk Africa, the Matoke man from Kisi. <laughs> thank you very much. The Africa Summit, of course, uh, just concluded earlier this week. Uh, what would you say was the single most contentious issue during the summit, and to what extent have you been able to address it? Well, I wouldn't call it contentious, but uh, the, 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 uh, the highlight of the meeting was uh, the discussion of uh, uh, you know, the issue of peace and security in the continent as a whole, and the focus on uh, Mali in particular. Mali in particular. And what? as you know, that uh, there was a special pledging conference which was held the day after the summit, and uh, I must say it was very well attended. Uh, you know, very many heads of state and government and also international community. Uh, spanning from all over or around the world. Let's talk about uh, the African uh, uh, response so far. Uh, we do know that uh, initially you were looking at a figure of $460 million uh, for uh, a peacekeeping force in Mali, but you apparently raised it almost close to $1 billion. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, that's true. Uh, we needed a total of uh, over uh, almost 900 million. And how, and how have uh, how have the uh, various uh, countries responded or reacted so far? Given the time lead, uh, Shaka, to this uh, uh, pledging conference, I think, and and it's very clear. The, the, the response was really uh, very uh, you know, overwhelming, and, and, and I don't think that is really the end of the story. Uh, I believe many also indicated that they would be announcing their pledges later. So I would be saying, yes, uh, we are on our way. And, 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 uh, and of course, uh, this is significant in the sense that it will enable a FISMA to be on the ground as soon as possible, and, and thereafter we, we can be raising resources to support uh, what the French have done and what AFISMA will be doing, and we believe the wide international community can come uh, on board later on. We were having uh, a bit of a problem uh, on uh, the telephone line, so I don't really know whether you have already addressed the issue of uh, the troops so far, because from what I have seen, it looks like uh, there are several African countries uh, which have contributed a lot of troops. Uh, have they, for example, uh, been able to reach the sort of magic number or the number that uh, you expected? I think we'll get that number. I mean, from the indications uh, in the pledging uh, conference, uh, one would see the figure. 8,000, uh, you know, being uh, reached uh, without any major challenge. What about uh, the bottom line? Um, I realize that uh, African countries have been able to contribute about $50 million. Again, is that number accurate? Yes, it is accurate, yes. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, from uh, the commission resources and also the contribution uh, of member states. Uh, so yes, we should be able to get that figure uh, already uh, coming from the African Union Commission and the member states. What about uh, the international community? Uh, how much do they, uh, have they contributed so far? The figure that was reached yesterday was close to 453 million. So you can see that, yes, the, the international community pledged uh, 400 uh, on top of what the African Union had pledged. And as I said earlier on, 
there is more pledges that uh, would be on the way from other member states who may not have uh, been able to announce their pledges yesterday. Now, Mr. Muncha, you know as well as I do that uh, sometimes uh, countries do pledge to make a contribution, but when it comes to actually walking the walk, they, you find that they are missing in action. How can we be sure, for example, that uh, this time around, the amount of money that uh, have been pledged, indeed, at the end of the day, will be money in the bank? Now, the three partners who are very much involved in this matter, that is uh, the UN uh, itself, uh, the ECOWAS, and the African Union Commission, we met yesterday, soon after uh, the pledging conference, and agreed to have a follow-up mechanism that uh, would ensure that all those funds uh, are turned in. And, and unfortunately for, for, for the, the, the bulk of the funds, uh, you know, the, 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 there were, you know, four or five major contributors, uh, and, and I think their track record speaks for itself, uh, where we are confident that we should be able to rack in all this money that was pledged. Is it also true that uh, you are supposed to be having uh, another fundraising uh, meeting or conference uh, in Brussels? There's going to be a meeting next week. As to whether it turns out to be a pledging, uh, well, I think what is important is to assess the mission. Uh, a number of our partners, uh, for instance, the European Union, has not only pledged, and, and that's one area that where we feel that this pledge will definitely come in because they are doing it within the funds that we have uh, a program uh, of cooperation with the European Union under the African Peace Facility but also to train and, and, and uh, you know, give uh, logistical support uh, to the AFISMA forces. Yes, yes, there is going to be a meeting in Brussels next week. Now, what about uh, back in Bamako, the Malian capital? Uh, you must, of course, uh, be having a dialogue with the interim government there. Um, have you been able to emphasize uh, the fact that perhaps what is really needed here is a political solution as opposed to a military solution? That has always been our stand. I mean, the African Union has always, uh, you know, believed that uh, force should be the last resort. And that's why we, we condemn uh, the move uh, by, you know, the separatists and the Islamists who tried to move southwards to to overthrow the state and, and, and also uh, destroy and uh, do all sorts of uh, crimes, uh, we always never take uh, political uh, settlement out of the table. Uh, and even a situation as it is, with all what is happening, we believe that the Mari must continue to, uh, you know, talk within Mari itself. And, 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 and that is there for your right, is something that... Is, we, we really encourage, not just talk about, but encourage and would support. What is the difference, if any, between uh, the uh, Tuareg rebel group or the MNLA, the National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, and the main militant Islamic group, which until, of course, today was based in Kidar, in northern Mali? Mm. Um. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, as you know, that in Mali we have had uh, a number of groups, and uh, there are contradictions within those groups. Uh, the, the, there are groups which, uh, uh, you know, have got a, a heavy domestic agenda, talking about uh, marginalization and, and, and so forth. But th there are also groups which bring in the extremist, uh, uh, you know, ideas of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, elements of that have got fundamentalist uh, uh, approach, uh, and and also we know that in uh, in that same region, we have all these other groups which uh, are managing a kind of illegal economy, uh, and which are also linked to to Al Qaeda and all that. I see. Well, 
We are going to have to stop right there, and I have to say thank you so much, uh, Elastas Mwencha, the African Union Deputy Chairperson, uh, who joined us via telephone link up from the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa. Thank you very much, sir.